So we're just supposed to like wait for him to show up or something? Indeed we are. As much as this hurts, we gotta wait. I mean, I know the forward core has been a problem recently with the lack of goal scoring, but how harsh do you think this guy's gonna be? Well, he's a, he's a new guy, so I don't expect him to be very nice. Let's put it like that. All right, all right, guys, calm down, calm down. I'm here, sorry I'm late. It's report card time. I had to put them all together. Oof. Just please tell me you were at least a little bit gentle. Hey, you guys aren't the one who gets to tell me how to do my job, okay? You're the one who's supposed to be optimistic because it's all you know, and you're the one who's supposed to be pessimistic because that's the only thing you know. Hey, it's not my fault I've been here six years. Which means I'm the one who's a realist. So why don't you guys just calm down and let's get through this because we got a lot of players to cover. A lot of forwards who have had good years, a lot of forwards who have had not so good years. And so it's time to give them all their midterm grades. Now, it's really unfortunate to have to be this rough right out of the gate with our first player in the form of Brett Howden, but he hasn't really had a season that I would consider to be very good. Sure, he's been hampered by injury. Sure, he hasn't had a lot of consistency in terms of his line partners, but a grade of a C plus is about as good as I'm willing to give him. He hasn't really lit the lamp very well with his one goal and two assists through 24 games played. Um, and so with that being said, it genuinely wouldn't shock me if he isn't part of a, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was part of a uh, trade deadline package going the other way for the Golden Knights to bring in some buddy to help with our scoring problems. Because while he's a good two-way forward, while he's really good depth, and while he's a pretty responsible player, he's not really bringing a lot of offense and his plus minus isn't very good, hence the C plus grade. Now, Keegan Colasar is sitting up there with a strong B-, and the only reason he's got a B- is because after three years in the NHL and three years of me just wanting him to be just a great player and this great elite bottom six goal scorer, tough guy, replacement for Ryan Reeves, he still can't hit the ocean from the pier in prime scoring position. And that's not saying that he's played poorly or anything. He's got 49 games played, five goals, six assists for 11 points. But he leads the team in fights and penalty minutes. So, I mean, he's got a role, hence why he's not in the Cs. But I can't really give him a grade above a B- in good conscience because aside from being like an agitator player, aside from being sandpaper, which is great in the playoffs, don't get me wrong, he's got to be able to find that other level to his game. Sure, he's got the five goals, but he hasn't scored in a hot minute. And he's he's putting up points but not at the rate that you would expect a bottom six player to do, especially in that role, because he's on a line with pretty decent players. He spent time with Will Carrier. He spent time with Nick Waugh. He spent time on a line that he knows really, really well and that has been together for a couple of years. So I would almost expect a few more points from Keegan Colasar in that regard. Now, I feel like I'm going to shock some people with my grade for Paul Cotter into the All-Star break. I've got to give him a solid A. 33 games played, 8 goals, 3 assists for 11 points. Now, the point totals don't really leave a lot to be desired, but it's the goal total that really gets me excited for what he's got going forward and why I gave him an A overall. 8 goals from a guy who is who was a member of the Henderson Silver Knights when the season started, basically. He was one of those players that looked really good at a training camp. I was up on him. I was in his camp from the very start of training camp saying, he's going to make this team out of camp. And all it took was a couple of injuries and a really good opportunity. He's played all over the top six when we've been dealing with this injury problem, especially since Stone went out when Marshall was out for a little bit. He at one point was taking shifts with Eichel, literally in the last game before the break. So I don't really know what else to tell you other than Paul Cotter is, he's definitely deserving of this A grade. And hopefully he's able to keep it going as he may become a very critical player down the stretch. Assuming we get healthy, he'll start to move back down the lineup and he'll start to get into matchups where he's more comfortable. And I wouldn't be shocked if he finishes the season with like 15, 16 goals. Now we have to go from a really good grade to a really unfortunately bad grade in the form of Michael Amadio's C+. Now Michael Amadio's got 37 games this year, 7 goals, 5 assists, 12 points. Now again, that's pretty good numbers for a middle bottom six guy. Here's the kicker. He was on the top line for a good chunk of like November, December, when he had like a seven game point streak where he put up three quarters of all of his points this year. I think he had eight points on that seven game point streak. 
And so since then, he's done next to nothing. Sure, he scored a goal a couple of games ago against the Washington Capitals, and he's looked okay defensively, but he's been called up to do a job on the top line with Eichel and Stevenson for a while, and he just isn't producing at the same rate that he was. That being said, he doesn't not have value. He's a very valuable player, but he's kind of in the same boat that I've got Brett Howden in, where I wouldn't be surprised if he's part of a deal at the trade deadline to help the Golden Knights address other issues, primarily high-end scoring. Um, there's That's nothing wrong with him as a player, because um, he's, he's a pretty decent player, and he seems like a really good guy. But it just wouldn't shock me if the Golden Knights are going to move on from him, if it's part of a package deal to bring in a new player to help the Golden Knights with scoring. Remember, he was a waiver claim last season when we were in the depths of injury hell. And so, it, I mean, if we're able to get some value from him, great. If we hold on to him, great. He's going to be one of those players where if he does a little bit better, that's great. And if he doesn't do any better, he wouldn't have been outperforming or underperforming expectations. Just given the opportunities that he's had this year playing on that top line, I almost expected more from him. So I feel pretty good giving him that C+. I'm going to give Will Carrier a B plus on this one. He's for one reason. He is one of the only players in the bottom six who's currently sitting at a positive plus minus. Will Carrier is an anchor on our fourth line. He has always looked really good, except for when he's been out for injury. He's got 45 games this year, 12 goals, 6 assists, 18 points. He's got more game-winning goals this season than he did in his entire career combined up until this season. He's having a career year, and I feel really bad giving him a B plus. The only reason I'm giving him a B plus is because he got hurt, and he had to miss a few games, and Really, things kind of have snowballed since then. He's looked okay since coming back into the lineup, picked up a goal in the last game before the All-Star break. But, like, I can't really complain, but I can't in good conscience give him an A- minus because he hasn't been a top-line player. Sure, he's got the 12 goals. Sure, he's got 18 points. But he's kind of the motor. Him and Nick Waugh are the two most valuable players on that, like, bottom six. And so... You know, I got to give him a B plus because he's played really, really well. And if he had played just a little bit better, if he'd gotten to 15 goals, it'd have been an A, maybe even an A plus because that's flying way above your station for a bottom six player like Will Carrier. Speaking of Nick Waugh, oddly enough, he's the next one up on the list because I'm doing this report card in reverse point order. Uh, Nick Waugh is giving him a solid B. Now, that's very fair given that I gave Will Carrier a B plus and they're both kind of occupy the same role. They're both power forwards. They both are really good puck carriers. Nick Waugh's 48 games, 9 goals, 12 assists for 21 points is pretty good. He's got, he's good. He's good depth scoring. He's definitely earning that contract extension he signed in the offseason. He's been a very good player. The reason I didn't give him a B plus and let, and settled on a B on like Will Carrier is that when Carrier's game isn't on, he's still making a difference. He throws the body around. He's good at puck possession. He's become a one-man break-in uh, to the offensive zone, while Nick Waugh, when his game is off, he kind of becomes invisible at times, and that's not really good when you're looking for depth scoring. Sure, he's middle-bottom six, so it's not the end of the world when a middle-bottom six player is kind of invisible throughout a game, but Nick Waugh can be a game-breaker. I still remember when he undressed Victor Hedman last year and scored on Andre Vasilevsky at home at the Fortress, and everybody went ballistic. And he's got this talent, but he hasn't really had the opportunity to show it this year, whether it be due to lack of chemistry, whether it be having to play with all manner of players, whether it be Mike Amadio, Paul Cotter, Keegan Colas, or Phil Kessel. He's had no consistency, so it's been really hard to really get a read on him this year. And so I'm not going to knock him too badly, but, you know, he's played good, but he could play so much better. Ah, yes, the NHL Ironman himself, Phil Kessel. Now, he's had a pretty good year. I'm actually kind of surprised at how well he's played. Of course, he's played all 51 games this year, 9 goals, 12 assists, 21 points, which is pretty good. He's got the exact same stat line as Nick Waugh with three more games played, which makes sense because they've kind of been attached at the hip, especially for the last month when they've both been healthy. And by that, I mean when Waugh didn't miss those three games. But Phil Kessel gets a B because he's got a good offensive upside, but he hasn't quite found a line that works for him yet. He's kind of been shuffled around the lineup. We tried to stick him with the Misfits without Marcia so for a while. Tried to stick him with Eichel on the top line with Stevenson when Stone first went out. Trying all kinds of things. And he's a good player. He's gotten hot. He's been one of our highest point getters in the last five games. I think he's got like three goals in the last six. So at this pace he's on, he might get to 20 goals this year. I think he could put up 11 in the last 30 games. And if he gets to 20, that would be more than what the Golden Knights asked for out of him. But he just hasn't quite found 
a pair that works with him. He hasn't quite found a line that makes him comfortable because he is a true scorer and he's showed it. I mean, he banked one off of a he banked one off the goalie a couple of games ago. That's a very heady play that only players who have been in the league for a long time know to do. And you know, he's been a decent player. I have no complaints. I loved the signing from the day we did it. And honestly, I hope we choose to re-sign him in the offseason because he's a valuable player. He's great for developing the young guys and Goodness knows we have a lot of young guys in the system, whether it be Paul Cotter, whether it be Jonas Ronbier. We've got, you know, Ivan Morozov in the system. Brendan Brisson's going to be coming up any time now, I think, especially with recent breaking news, which I'll cover in about two minutes. You know, he's a great player and he's played really well. So I would give him a B, but this is really a B more, more leaning towards a B plus because it's really hard to complain about anything he's done aside from the lack of defensive upside. But that's kind of what we signed up for. Now, this one hurts. I really hate dogging on an original misfit. You know, Jonathan Marshall is my is my buddy. Uh, I love I love seeing him play. I've watched, I mean, you know, I've been a fan of his ever since before I started really caring about the Golden Knights six years ago in their inaugural season. Um, but I got to give him a B minus. You know, he's played 45 games, 15 goals, 17 assists, 32 points. That's pretty good. That's, that's really, really good uh, in terms of points, goals, and assists. He's been a valuable player, but when he is ice cold, he is ice cold and right now coming into the all-star break and i know this is recency bias he is ice cold he's got like no goals in his last nine and he's he's not really doing a lot on the defensive side of the puck sure he's a great guy and he's playing really really well he's just not scoring the biggest complaint that i have which is the main reason why it's a b minus is because he's the one player i expected to step up in mark stone's absence to become the new vocal leader of the team. He is an incredibly vocal player. He's gotten into numerous jawing matches with opponents, and I would expect him to take that fire into the locker room and get his team riled up, especially in absence of their captain, but he just doesn't seem like he's done that. He's had the opportunity to elevate his status amongst the team as, you know, this leader, this, you know, heart and soul player, and he just, it doesn't seem like he's done that. The team hasn't responded in the way that one would expect, and if anything, he's gotten frustrated. He's gripping up on the stick and he's just not scoring he's not putting up the numbers that he was earlier on in the year so as much as it sucks I gotta give this misfit a b minus and rolling along with the misfits misfit number two on the chopping block to receive a grade is Riley Smith 51 games 18 goals 14 assists 32 points pretty good year for Riley and because of that I I've got to give him an a just a solid nice round a he hasn't done anything wrong I think he currently leads the NHL in shorthanded goals um, you know, he has been really good on the defensive side of the puck. And even though his offensive output has dipped in the last seven to 10 games, along with, you know, the rest of the team, since we haven't scored more than two goals in seven of the last nine games, uh, he's played really, really well. He's been very responsible. His plus minus is pretty good. Uh, he's just a smart player who makes a lot of good decisions, both in the offensive zone and defensive zone throw out there on the penalty kill. There's a reason our penalty kill is really, really good. And, you know, he's had a lot of critical moments, especially in the first half before the All-Star break. And so I can't really blame him for anything. And he's kind of been the motor of the misfit of the misfit line when it's been together under Bruce Cassidy. So I feel pretty good with the A. I kind of found it ironic that the three misfits were all next to each other, having almost identical statistical seasons with Marsh Sos 32 points, Smith's 32 points, and Carlson's 34 points in the form of 11, 11 goals and 23 assists through 51 games. Which is really, it's, one, it's really good that both Carlson and Smith have played every game this season. That's that's a good thing in and of its own. Um, he, I've got to give William Carlson a B plus. He's had a really good return to form. He had a really, really rough last season. And so, sure, his numbers are really good. They're comparable with the rest of his line mates. But you expect Marsh so to put up good numbers. You expect Smith to put up good numbers. And there's become this, like, idea that William Carlson isn't the player that he was six years ago. And while he's not going to put up 40 goals this year... And, and I don't think anybody on this team is going to put up 40 goals this year, which is really frustrating. But that's kind of beside the point. The point is, he's looked a lot smarter on the defensive side of the puck. He's become a better playmaker. That misfit line, when they're together, they click like crazy. And so I got to give William Carlson credit for his role in making that line as potent as it was six years ago or five years ago or four years ago. So again, B plus is fair. And if he just puts up a couple more goals, I you know, when we get to the end of the season... And assuming we make the playoffs, he's a big game player. He scores a lot of goals in big moments. It wouldn't shock me if his grade were to go up over the course of the rest of the season with the remaining 31 games left. Now, I really thought we wouldn't be covering Jack until a little bit later on. But he's he's kind of had a rough go of it recently. 
38 games, 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points. Now, I'm going to I'm going to have to take this player grade to in twofold. I'm going to look at before he was injured and look at after he came back. So, before he was injured, absolute A, A plus player, point per game, game breaker, scoring goals at will basically it felt like setting up his line mates in Stone and Stevenson. They both play they were all playing really really well. The offense was working and we were winning a lot of games. And then Eichel goes down and then he comes back and he's played like a C, like a, almost a D kind of player. He hasn't put up a lot of points. He is ice cold right now when it comes to scoring. He's got like one goal in his last 10 games, not a lot of points, and he's become invisible, which is one of those things that I really hate for big game players like Jack Eichel is when they become invisible. He's got this offensive skill set and sure he's really fast and sure he's really smart, and sure, he's Jack Eichel, and he draws a lot of attention, and I have to bear that in mind, but he's become invisible. He hasn't put up any points. He hasn't really changed the game at all. So when you combine those two, I'm just going to have to sit with a B, B-, minus, because he's got to break out of this cold spell, and I hope the All-Star break gives him the rest and recovery that he needs, because if he doesn't break out of this cold spell and he doesn't become, you know, first two months of the year Jack Eichel— Golden Knights are going to be in trouble, so I hope I hope whatever's going on is a wake-up call for him. Now, this one's really hard to do because he was having such a great year, and I was almost looking forward for him coming back after the All-Star break because that's what was reported all over the place. And I'm going to make a whole separate video breaking this one down, and if I don't link to it here, you'll, you'll know where to find it. Um, but Mark Stone, second on the team in points. 34 or 43 games played 17 goals 21 assists 38 points i gotta give him an a minus he was playing really really well he was playing some of the best hockey i'd seen him play since he first came to vegas smart crisp passes game breaker in the neutral zone picking pucks out of the air doing a really good job turning over getting the offense moving in the other direction and of course he's the captain which comes with its own baggage and he leads the team better than any captain I think I've ever seen across the NHL and it's very obvious that when he went down the team kind of went down with him now um it's that that's beside the point obviously because you know he he put up statistically a pretty good season and sure he's out for the foreseeable future but he, there's still the opportunity for him to come back and his absence in cap space provides opportunities to for the Golden Knights to go out and do something but I'll cover that in a couple of hours um, all in all, A- minus is pretty good. I feel pretty good with that. He's a great player, and I really hope he's able to come back as soon as possible. And rounding off our forward grades has got to be Chandler Stevenson. 51 games played, 11 goals, 33 assists, 44 points. That's an A, A- minus right there, somewhere in between the two. I couldn't really decide, so I said both. Um, it shows that, you know, he's playing really, really well. He's leading the team in points. Obviously, he's it's incredible that Washington let him go a few years ago for just a fourth round pick that turned into nothing. And now he's become an irreplaceable player in our lineup. You know, I remember, um, you know, two playoffs ago when he was out or two years ago in the playoffs when he was out for that one game uh, against Montreal, it made such a big difference. And he has continued to become just this cornerstone of our offensive attack on the top line. He's got just irreplaceable chemistry with Mark Stone. I think him and Eichel get along well, but the lines have been so shuffled over the last two months that it's been really hard to tell who's good with who anymore. But it, the this is really a fruits of his labor moment. He was this player who's traded for nothing, essentially, and has become a cornerstone of one of the what was supposed to be one of the best teams in the NHL. And it was just reported a couple of days ago now that he's going to replace Seattle's Matty Beniers at the All-Star game. So that's really the... That's that's really him being rewarded for all the good work, and I know me giving him a good grade doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but he's definitely earned a really, really solid grade for the amount of work that he's put in um, over the course of this season. And with that, we're done. Well, at least for the forwards. Which one of you, which one of you idiots wants to take on defensemen? I mean, I was going to take that one anyway. Don't call me an idiot. I don't appreciate that. And I guess that leaves me with goalies, so... Um... I'll go get to work with my tiny little portfolio. And, and guys, let's, let's, both of you, let's be sure not to overreact to anything. Okay? Okay. Catch you guys in the next one.